The True Ambition Podcast with John Zink is brought to you by IT Avalon. IT Avalon, IT staffing and professional services done right. Visit our sponsor at itavalon.com. Now, welcome to True Ambition. Hey everybody, welcome to the True Ambition Podcast. My name is John Zink, and uh, we're honored today to be joined by none other than Mr. Chase Stiegel. <laughs> John, thank you for having me. Well, we're glad uh, to be here. It's uh, it's fun to be here because we're uh, we're we're up in the boardroom on the 25th floor of the El Dorado. Yes, we are. And uh, just going to go through a little bit of history, and then you and I are going to have a nice conversation. I look forward to it. That'd be great. So, born and raised in Palo Alto, California. Yes, sir. Lives now in Reno, Nevada. Yes. As do I. Uh, today, corporate vice president of player development for Caesars Entertainment. Correct. Married to, is it Andre? Andre, yeah. Andre, uh, for 30 years. Uh, daughter Ari, Ariana. Ariana, 16 years old. 16, three dogs and four cats. That's a lot of dogs and cats. A lot of, a lot, a lot of veterinarians on payroll. <laughs> so I want to tell a quick story of uh, how you and I met. And I don't know if you remember or not, but uh, it was before Carissa, my wife, and I got to stay in some of the nicer rooms here. Um, we were checking in and we had Carissa's mom, Shirley, with us. And uh, we were in the gold room, and uh, and that that's where the quote unquote VIPs get to check in here at the El Dorado. And uh, somebody, I think it might have been Katie, who was working here at the time, mm -hmm. said, "Mr. Zinc, Chase just let me know that the limousine is ready to go for you and fully stocked up, and your suite is uh, ready to go." I said, "Oh, bye. That sounds great." <laughs> <laughs> and it was before the before we spent enough money to have places yeah. like that and things like that. So. I went with my, uh, I went along with it and uh, went up to the room. We walked into the 26th floor and opened up uh, two doors to walk into this uh, spacious, beautiful room. And when I got up there, it just, uh, I'd had enough. And I called back down and I said, I think you have the wrong, wrong. Mr. Zink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sure enough, there was a professional golfer with the last name of Zink. Zink. I think it was Charlie Zink. Zink. Yeah. And, uh, I went and got my new key for my little shitty room. <laughs> just, just think of your name as Smith, all the things you could have get. So. so that's how we met. Yeah. And uh, I know we've, we, we've talked about that a couple times, but uh, I always love uh, going back and uh, reliving that, that. story. <laughs> so first question is, how'd you end up in Reno? Um, I grew up in Palo Alto, California, and uh, uh, my dad was a car dealer. And... Uh, uh, like a lot of car dealers that I found out through the years, um, he liked uh, to gamble and uh, have a good time. He was a pretty successful, very hardworking individual. So uh, to blow off steam, he would come to Reno and Lake Tahoe. So, um, you know, after time, you know, my, I have an older brother, you know, we'd be, you know, at home. And then a couple of times he finally would bring us up here. And we used to stay at Harris, which is uh, an old casino, which used to be right across the street, which now is kind of funny. The, the company I work for bought Harris. So, but right. anyway, so, but anyways, um, so uh, Reno actually became a second home for us. Uh, my parents would come up quite a bit on the weekends and stuff. And every now and then my brother and I would have the chance to come up. So um, fast forward to my uh, senior year in high school and, uh, and I played a little golf and uh, I was okay. And uh, we're trying to figure out where I'm gonna go to school. And my dad um, at the time purchased uh, a piece of a small casino on the Truckee River, the Holiday Hotel. So he goes, you know, Chase, you're gonna learn the casino business. So I want you to move to Reno, Nevada, and go to school at University of Nevada. And I'm sitting there going, oh, why me, dad? <laughs> you know? So anyways, um, I ended up coming to college up here literally two weeks before school started. Uh, I came up, met with the golf coach with my father and uh, came to school here and uh, fell in love with the area. Um, met great people right off the get-go and uh, 
met my wife. That's hopefully we maybe talk about that down the road in here. So, uh, but uh, and uh, just kind of just by luck, just by my dad's kind of idea of uh, coming up here to check it out. Then he wanted me to go to work. And the funny thing is, I didn't even do that when I gra- when I got out, when I got out of school. I ended up working the golf business. So, but. so what what did you uh, study in college that to get you ready for? Uh, the casino business. I really, uh, um, you know, the, unfortunately, my daughter's probably going to see this. So, you know, <laughs> you know, I had a really, really good time in college. Um, my college years prepared me to do the job I have now. It did not prepare me to do the job that I would have had to do uh, working for my father at the car dealership or running a casino. Right. Yeah. I, I had I had the most fun in college ever. I, I didn't go to school a lot. So, <laughs> well, I didn't go to school at all. I, yeah, I, I, I played in bands and traveled all over the place, and that was my college yeah. Uh, career. Yeah, I had, I had this. I mean, I, I had the the thing that, you know, it's kind of no one talks about today. I had the college experience of uh, meeting a lot of great contacts that I still use to this day. A lot of great friendships that have helped me all the way through my career, which is, you know kind of unheard of now with the I hate to say with maybe at least what I think of the age of you know everybody's on the telephone or doing all the stuff you know you really don't have that one-on-one that truly uh, I feel bonds of friendship you know I, I have a group of probably 20 or 30 guys that I hung out with college even my high school friends to this day you know are well, I hate to say on speed dial on my phone because that kind of contradicts what I said but you know I could call get you know almost anything so yeah well, great college experience here it's interesting because I, i've known you for 14 years yeah you know somewhere around there and uh, i'm yet to meet anybody who doesn't have good things to say about chase uh, so it just uh, it, it it speaks a lot to your character and uh you know it's it, it you saying that right there uh, i've got almost the same thing i've got a lot of friends yeah you know but Best friends, I can count them on a hand. Yeah. Um, but acquaintances, I've got plenty. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a fine line, you know. But, um, you know, we, I, I think uh, it's just um, my – here again, I keep going back to my parents. You know, my parents were uh, – you know, everybody has their issues, but they were truly good people. And what what it, were their names? Uh, Margo and Wayne. Okay. And they were uh, – they were – both outgoing in their own ways, you know? So, uh, you know, and uh, I, I got a lot of my traits from them, good and bad. And, uh, and uh, you know, and my dad was a salesman, car salesman. So, you know, he could sell anybody. Right. And, you know, I, I, I think I have a little of that. And my mom was just, you know, the sweetest lady in the world. You know? So I wanted to ask you about that. Is that- I know that when we were preparing for this, uh, you had talked about uh, the biggest influences in your life and mom and dad were on there. Yeah. Um, Does your fashion style (laughs) and your fashion sense and your decorating, does that come from mom or dad? Uh, Both. My dad was a very uh, smart dresser. Uh, We grew up, like I said, in Palo Alto and he was a a frequent customer of Wilkes Bashford, which is a famous, clothier in okay. uh, San Francisco and Palo Alto. And then when he would come up here, I'm trying Menards, which was another famous clothier that would uh, clothe like Bill Hara, a lot of the entertainers, which was down on the Truckee River, Mr. Carano, the Carano brothers that I so truly to my heart now. Um, and uh, he loved clothes. I mean, and uh, it's funny when he passed away uh, like five or six years ago, um, I went through his closets and, you know, you know, I, I just was amazed at how many great clothes he had. I mean, just beautiful clothes. My only problem was he was five, six and weighed a buck 40. <laughs> so, you know, I, I couldn't fit into nothing. <laughs> and the shoes, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a size 12 double E, you know, he was an eight C, <laughs> you know, so, you know, the milkshake of life, I got screwed. My, my, my dad's side of the family are all very petite, um, small Texans, which is hard to believe. And uh, my mom's side of the family is from Chicago. And uh, all the men in, in her life are 6'4", uh, uh, wrestlers, just, just 
massive guy. So right. you know, um, and uh, so when the jeans got shook, I got I got I got, I got the height the five six, and I got the girth of the <laughs> six four. So I got screwed on that deal. Well, what you didn't get screwed on is a good golf swing. Yeah, that well, yeah. I mean, not bad. Uh, well, I. I I've seen you golf. I've golfed with uh, plenty of uh, folks through the El Dorado. Um, I want to go through that a little bit. W when did you realize that you were pretty good at golf? Um, I grew up in, like I said, again, Palo Alto. And, uh, and uh, my parents built one of the first homes on Palo Alto Hills Country Club, which mm. was a country club in the foothills of Palo Alto. And we lived right on the 17th tee box, which um, literally... From my front door, it was probably 20 yards that I got on the tee box, which is, you know, where you hit your drive. So every day when I would come home from school, the school bus would drop us off. And uh, there was literally us, me, me and like two other girls. There was no kids in our neighborhood because we were one of the first houses that were built up there. So uh, um, I would come down the hole, walk down to the house, and uh, my parents you know said hey your playground is going to be the golf course so i would take our rottweiler at the time you know and we'd go play 17 uh, 11 16 chip you know and it was like a little triangle that i'd play and just go you know and i keep playing and playing it all you know until it got dark and uh i was fortunate enough to have a couple of really good instructors um that uh when i was young my parent you know here again you know, you want to take lessons, go ahead and all that. And uh, so actually I was better when I was a little kid than I was, you know, I, I, my high school years, I started getting involved in a lot of other stuff and I was still okay enough to, you know, get through. But, you know, golf is so hard. I mean, compared to the, 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 the players of today, even the players back then, um, you know, there, there's such degrees of how good you are. I mean, I, I was okay. You know, I competed in a, a, the junior ranks of Northern California. Uh, college, you know, I was always like the five or six man, you know. Yeah, but, you know, to most people, that's pretty good. Oh, it's you know, great. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, when I got out of college, I got in the PGA, not professional golf, playing golf, but how to run, you know, golf courses and all that. So that gives you a lot of credibility and stuff. I love the game, as you know. I mean, and, I, and I'm still to this day struggling to get better each day. You know, every day I think I got something. You know, the well, it's, move. it's the it's the great thing about golf that you know I'm a shitty golfer, um, but you enjoy playing. I, I, enjoy, I play with you a lot. Yeah, you enjoy. enjoy playing, we enjoy it. Yeah. Exactly. I enjoy watching other people play. I enjoy the times when I hit a good shot and like something good comes out of it. Yeah. I, I enjoy watching people like Todd Fisher. Yeah. I enjoy watching these guys that are just, it's flawless their swing. Yeah. You oh, know, absolutely. And through the El Dorado and through Caesars, I've got to play with all these different people and yeah. had these experiences that I otherwise wouldn't have had. Yeah. You know, I, I uh, you know, if you ever have a chance to spend a day on the golf course of somebody, you can learn a ton about them in that four hour period of time. A lot about their character, their personality, you know, what makes them tick. You know, as a as a business tool, it's it's probably one of the greatest assets you can have is knowing how to play a little golf and, and getting able to ride with somebody that you want to spend time with. Um, and if you're somewhat good, it makes it a lot easier because most people are terrible. So they'll they'll give you they'll actually pay attention to what you're saying. You know, you know. So that's good. But uh, yeah, you know, it's a great sport. Uh, my little girl is uh, learning how to play, and uh, you know, it's just so much fun. Well, that was one of my questions on here because I know that uh, Ariana is uh, competing now, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a uh, it was a COVID a COVID uh, uh, introduction to the game because uh, um, unfortunately she was quarantined like a lot of other kids, so you know there wasn't much to do. You can go outside, so um, you know we're we're blessed enough to have a golf course close by our house. So she just started going up there and spending some time and it was also another way that you know a couple of her friends actually spent some time together because they were outside and she kind of you know got the bug you know you know and uh and so she's she's been playing for almost two years she's i think she's doing great i mean 
you know, it's, 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 it's very tough game, but she loves it. And I love the fact that she loves it. She won't listen to a word I say, so it doesn't matter, you know? So well, you that, know, that, yeah, was yeah. My, that was my yeah, question. It, it, so it's, it's, as, as a PGA pro, as a person who has coached many people, yeah. how does that go with your daughter? Not well, <laughs> not well at all. I, you know, I, uh, yeah, you know, it, no, it doesn't go at all. <laughs> so, um, thank God I have a lot of friends that can help her, that do help her. But I tell you what, it's a great time uh, watching her grow, doing it, you know, spending the time. You and I playing a term with her, you know, it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a great thing. It, it's really fun because it means a lot to me. And, you know, I hope it means a lot to her, so. So when you were uh, younger, uh, looks like just out of uh, college or maybe in college, you were working at golf courses. I saw Hidden Valley as uh, well as Wolf Run, right? Wolf Run. I, when I got out of school, I, uh, um, my mom's, one of my mom's dear friends, um, ran a, a, a senior PJ tour event in Indian Wells and it was called the vintage Invitational. It was the second senior event on the, what now has become the senior PJ tour, but it was okay. the second one, it was the second tournament. And, um, they were looking for a tournament operations manager and this close family friend of ours, you know, hired me and I don't know why she hired me but I tell you what it was the greatest job a 23 year old kid or 22 I don't even know how old I was 23 year old kid could have they gave me a Cadillac car they uh, my own office you know and I think I was paid forty five thousand dollars a year you know you, know, you had was, arrived yeah I arrived I arrived <laughs> and and you know, this is how crazy it was they said hey you know, you got to hire a staff. Like, I got to hire a staff. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, yeah, I got some guys. So I called up all my buddies from up here, you know. We're they, having yeah, a good yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 they're crazy. They're giving us cars. They're giving us money. We go golf. <laughs> There's beer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, we got everything. You know, we got our own trailer. You know, let's go. And uh, and uh, three, or f three and four, you know, each year I did it for a couple of years. Different guys came and we had so much fun. I mean, it was it was it was a cross between Animal House and the Caddy Shack, <laughs> and the whole time I was I was courting my wife too. You know, I was trying to you know close that deal as well. So, so did you guys meet in school? Andrea and I met uh, my s sophomore year. I was in a fraternity, and uh, this sounds stupid, but uh, she was a sorority, and she. They walked by the house and they were doing something like a pledge thing, and I saw her and um, just was a, instantly infatuated with her and uh, and uh, just um, just the chemistry. I don't know what it was, but uh, so I finally got the nerve to ask her out, and I took her to a dance, and things didn't work out the way that they were supposed to, and. Uh, um, if I tell you that, I, 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 she, I yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she wasn't, she, she wasn't into you or what? She was not into me. No, no, no. In fact, I think she left the dance early and, uh, I had fun. I know that, but, uh, but, um, so then I started chasing her, you know, that first, that year. And, you know, I did some stupid things now that I think about, it. I took an ad out in the school paper, uh, about her. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh took, uh, what ad, did the ad say? Sorry for, oh God, I wish I would have kept it. Sorry what happened, you know, at the dance. You know, my destiny or something like that. It's just, just, just not good. You know? That's amazing. But totally embarrassed her, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I sent her flowers and all that. And then um, uh, my buddy was the uh, DJ at KOZZ, which was, you know, the only rock station here in Reno at the time, basically. And he was the Sunday DJ. So, you know, we would always, like you know uh what do you call it when you you know the, the song's for you dedication dedication oh yeah I, I did the whole thing and you know <laughs> just got crickets and uh so um you know i kind of you know it, it was not good it was not good for a, a while so kind of funny things moved on and all of a sudden i'm down in the uh, uh palm desert indian wells working on that golf tournament and i got a call out of the blue um and she called and she was interviewing for a job down there so you know she wanted to know uh you know where to stay and all that and a couple of things so 
we met up there and uh all of a sudden just things kind of hooked up and 30 years later we're still very happy together and that's awesome yeah 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 a lot, the- a lot of misery in there you know <laughs> that, that that first chasing thing but uh it, it was good she's she's she is so much better of a person than i am i mean 10 times smarter 10 times you know the mom that i am to the dad you know just phenomenal person you know just you know just once in a lifetime catch you got to have that person that's got your back absolutely yeah you know and i'm i'm very much the frick to her frack you know i mean i i'll sit there and you know and you know and she'll just keep everything calm so it's yeah it were two very distinct personalities but our chemistry is pretty good well you took me back to the first time i met carissa you know when i just i saw her and i was like oh yeah whoa 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 whoa. something something just happened yeah you know that's it's it's a special thing that doesn't happen all the time it doesn't happen to all people no not at all it's a yeah it's just uh and it's funny because uh a couple of my true friends that i've talked about earlier that were in the fraternity and at that time you know knew i they i even said i go hey that's that's my destiny you know I, oh you're so full of shit oh excuse me but yeah, yeah 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 i go no it is so you know things do happen good for you um so um how did you end up going from the golf course into the casino business um i know your dad wanted you to go into the well casino yeah business. yeah he always wanted me to do it and to be honest with you i never learned anything on that side of it for my dad except how to uh how to probably make bets and lose bets and uh, you know <laughs> but I, always, I learned a lot of great people skills through my mom and dad but um i was working at uh hidden valley because i had to move back here to get engaged to my wife because my wife would not has she had a good job and she's very close to her family she would not move to california so were you living down in palm i desert was living before? down the desert and okay. i had a job like I said, that was unreal. And uh, I had to make a decision. And my dad had a car dealership down there that he wanted me to uh, work for him. And he wanted to, you know, probably pass it along. And uh, I said, uh, no, I'm going to move back to Reno. And I came back to Reno and I went to work for one of my friends who was the pro at Washoe Golf Course, which is a small uh, municipal golf course here in town. The best municipal golf course i think in the world but um and i went to work for six dollars an hour as a uh as a shop hand so i gave up you know a really good job when you're 23 years old in 1980 whatever it was to work it for six dollars an hour and uh so i did that i joined the pga of america you know i had to do like my three or four year internship for that and uh, uh the guys at washoe got me started and then i moved to hidden valley which is a private country club here, kind of moving up the ranks to first uh, assistant and all that. And uh, a couple things happened there that really changed uh, my course of my life is I, uh, I got to meet some uh, guys I play golf with all the time. Uh, Chris Alt, who was the athletic director and uh, football coach here at Nevada for a Hall long of time. Famer. Hall of Famer. Uh, Bill McHugh, who was a famous... Uh, sports um casino operator in northern nevada and um, i got to meet the coranos but i didn't know the coranos that well because they really didn't come out very much but i got the introduction but the other two gentlemen you know we play golf every wednesday you know and uh the athletic department at the time because of title nine this is when all that was starting to happen they built a golf course here in town they got the land and all that and they, they needed someone to be a head pro slash you know, what, what is what is title nine what is that title nine is for the uh and i'm probably uh not saying it correctly equal for men's and women's sports oh i see okay you know so and the golf course was going to be a revenue generator to equal out that that was the idea behind okay it, at I least. See. so um so i got the job as the uh head pro with the lua garen who was a, the gentleman who hired me but chris all they 
got me the interviews and all that. So I started working at Wolf Run and uh, head golf pro, and and uh, I had some buddies that were working here, and um, just kind of one thing led to another, and you know, three years in, uh, a good friend of mine named Mike Larigetta, who is uh, went on to have a really good career at the Venetian. Uh, here at the El Dorado Resorts and now at our convention center, called me and said, hey, I got a job for you. you know, and, I, and I wasn't looking for a job. I had a good job. But uh, they, wanna, they need someone to run their golf stuff for uh, El Dorado Resorts. That's when we were just El Dorado and uh, Silver Legacy. And uh, so I, 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 met my, uh, I met my guy for uh, lunch, Gene Carano, and Rick Murdoch over uh, the Chinese restaurant here. And uh, we had a great lunch, and they offered me the job. And went home. I talked to my wife. I go, hey, I got this opportunity to uh, be the golf pro and run golf tournaments for this for the casinos, casino. And uh, she, what'd she say? You know, she's very supportive of it. You know, she goes, well, you know, if that's going to make you happy. Yeah, uh, you know, probably hindsight, she probably would have said no if she would have known what it. I mean, now it's all perfect, but um, you know, so I I did it, and uh, within the first year, from I went from the golf pro to director of, uh, of uh, um, director of golf marketing, then the director of uh, player development. You know, very quick, but you know, those were you know, I was also. Yeah, twenty years younger. I mean, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I'd be here at eight in the morning, and I'd stay till three in the morning. I was going to say, there's a lot, yeah, of, yeah, I mean, a I lot mean, of scratching I, I, and clawing to get yeah. to where you're at now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was, it was, and that was, and it, you know, like any, you know, it was fun. It was fun the first. Five, it still is fun. First five years, though, you know, hey, you know, what, what's, what's next? You know, it, it was action. You know, it was a lot of fun. You know, and it was just exciting and. Every day was something new. You know, it wasn't even work. It's still not work. You know, I, I, I still, to this day, tell everybody I have the best job in the world. You know, I, I get to dress up, you know, and all that, but get to meet fabulous people, you know. But, uh, yeah, it was a lot of work, a lot of hours, a lot of work. But, you know, just uh, great bonds, met some, the family, the Carano family, I, you know, for the people that are don't know, they're, they're, they're just uh, – they're an institution in the gaming business, I believe, you know, and just just the most wonderful family. I mean, it's a traditional kind of, you know, I, I learned a lot about Italian families in the last 20 some years, you know, and uh, they're just classics. I mean, uh, four, well, brother, four brothers, a sister, the mom, the dad, and they, and they bring you into their family. Well, that, that kind of is a good segue into, uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about the Carano family. Yeah. Um, tell me about Don Carano. He, he's he's the father that yeah. started the whole started thing. Started the whole thing. I mean, you know, the one uh, regret I probably have is that um, when I came on board, he was uh, not retired, but he was uh, very much involved with their family winery. So he wasn't here as much. You know, he would come in. And couple, what's what's the name of that winery? Ferrari Carano, which is ph- world renowned, world renowned, phenomenal winery down in the, the Napa Valley. And um, so he would come up a couple days a week, and um, you know, and I was also, you know, I wasn't, I was not in the executive level to be in the meetings with him, but I, you know, I, I look forward to our time when I'd see him in the hallways, and uh, you know, always, you know. Hello, Mr. Carano, you know, and he was, uh, you know, just just a prince of a man with, uh, you know, his, uh, you know, he would recognize you and all that. So as as the years progressed that I uh, worked here, and unfortunately, he was here less, but um, we both had a, a, a very good, uh, um, a, a, a good uh, love of fine food. And and wine, I, I'm sure, but <laughs> but more fine food, me and him. So, um, I, I I got the you know the privilege of sneaking up to our buffet, and at the the time was probably the best buffet in Nevada, and uh, we would go out there and sneak in you know piece of fried chicken, and his wife did not want him eating fried chicken, 
<laughs> and I know my wife didn't want me eating fried chicken, you know. So we, sneak a piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, you know, you know, we we would go up and eat, and then you know, kind of unwritten rule, we wouldn't tell anybody, you know, about it, even though, you know, I'd have grease stains on my tie and all that. So uh, I, I, you know, my so many memories about how what he did and all that, and you know, to this day, you can still walk in his office up here, and there's a lot of things. I mean. Um, I did not get to spend as much time as uh, I, I wish I had with him, but the time I did spend and, and his legacy that he left with his kids, his the business, his grandkids, uh, the people in the community. It's it, you know it's just it's I, I you know I'm not a I'm not good with words, but it's it's and I don't know what it, it's it's un, it's just incredible. But, yeah. I, I would like to throw a couple, you know, names out. You know, just the famous families of you know the Kennedys. Yeah, I mean, you know, good or bad. I that is, it, it, Northern Nevada, Nevada. It's just it's an it's an incredible family, and, and you know, people really you, until you go to either work for them or or they uh, do stuff. You know, they they changed my life. They changed my family's life. So, you know, well, there's. Uh you got to work extensively with the sons and daughters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. so- Like uh, many other employees. I mean, our average employee here to this day, I'm gonna guess has been here 15, 20 years. We have employees that have been here since day one still. Oh yeah. You know, I, I was privileged to be the fact that I was, you know, got to spend a lot of time with the brothers and, and Cindy, you know, because my position, we would travel with, our gamblers, our players, marketing, um, you know, I, I don't know what they saw me, but I guess I was pretty good with people. So they took me on a lot of trips, you know? So, uh, you know, yeah, I did get, I still to this day spend a lot of time with them. So, so that leads to the next question, yeah. which is who is your favorite Carano? Ah, uh, that's, that's unfair. <laughs> I tell you what, I, uh, I, I, I love them all dearly, but that's uh, a very I, political yeah, answer. I, I, I am very, very close to Gino just because, uh, he was my boss for so many years. I'm very close to great. You know, I'm, I'm close to all of them. Um, they, they're just incredible, but Gene is, uh, Gene helped me with, through my career, Gene and Greg, you know, they, cause that's who was at the Eldorado. Yeah. You know, they, they really, you know, they, they looked after me. Pretty amazing people as uh, owners, as, um, and I've always heard the stories, like th each one of those kids had to start off in like valet and washing dishes and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Boomtown, they work at Boomtown, learn the trade there, um, food, everything. And that's, yeah, it's, they, they get it. Um, and if you really saw how they all treat people, it's, 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 it, you know, they treat everybody the same, which is a very rare thing to see nowadays. Well, it's you the know. reason that Carissa and I have been coming back to El Dorado and now Caesars yeah. for 15 years. Yeah. And, oh, the, the crazy thing is, and, uh, is now, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of them are retired or semi-retired, uh, now my boss is is Gary's son Anthony, who is the CEO of the company, and that's who I report to. And you know, uh, you know, here is someone twenty years my junior, and and you know, you you look at him, and it's like you're you're seeing all five of the the dad, the four brothers, Cindy. You you see them all in him, right? You know, it's just amazing. It's a, you know, and the respect you have. I mean, you know, the intelligence. I mean, the, these they're all uber smart. You know, I'm sitting there, Durr, you know, <laughs> what are we doing next? You know, you know, you know. So it's a, you know, it's a, you know, it's 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 phenomenal. You know, that, that's why every day, you know, I, I just wake up, you know, give myself the old, you know, what's what's today going to do? Because it's I, I I'm blessed with yeah. everything. Well, the the Carano family and what it's turned into being Caesars. I mean, I remember when the word first started coming out that this was going to happen. Yeah. You know, and like I said, it, it, like I said before, it's a family affair. And 
we're part of the extended family. Yeah. You know, and it's it, it's pretty crazy to then watch this whole thing unfold. It, it, yeah, it's just it's it's you know, you you're sitting there and you're in bed and you're watching, you know, Fox business and all of a sudden you see one of, you know, someone talking about it and then next thing you know, Tom Rager Anthony's on the TV talking about it. You know, stocks, this, that. But you know, it, it, the 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 true essence of the company is still there, and, and, and it's going to expand. Hopefully, with that brand, what we're doing is always will be the same. Is it's going to be you know family values, family uh, uh, hospitality, and it's hard. I mean, you know, I, I you know I'm not going to sit here and you know tell you, you know. That's what, you know, it's hard. You you have 50 properties and all that. You, you have, you know, it's it's pretty much almost impossible, but that's the goal. It's not impossible. That's the wrong thing to say. But our goal is to make it so no matter who you are, what, you know, when you come in and spend your, you know, money, you know, your, your, you know, your entertainment dollar, we want you to have the most value for it. You want to have the best experience you can have. And, and, you know, you want the, them to have the biggest bang for their buck, be it gambling, eating, entertainment, seeing your band, uh, going to get a steak at the Roxy, going to Caesars to see Usher, going, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do, you know, you worked awfully hard to make that happen, you know, to, to spend that money. And, and, and you know, you, you, you got you to gotta kick it up and make sure they have a good time. Which it's hard, but but I think uh, you know that's our goal. We're gonna make it so that, you know better than Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> well, for for what my li wife yeah. likes to do, it is better than yeah, Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, yeah that's the you know, it, you know, it, that's that's another thing. You know, that's the gaming business is is tough because, um, it's an expensive, it's an expensive entertainment value. I don't know if that makes sense, entertainment. It's an expensive entertainment habit to have. One way or the other, because you win. I mean, people win all the time, but it's expensive. So you really, if you're good at your job, which I think I am pretty good at mine and the people we work with, you, you want to make sure that it's a, it's a very memorable experience. Well, you guys are great at your job, and that's the reason we keep coming back. Yeah, hey, well. I mean, it really, it really is. I mean, you talk about Disneyland. I've been to Disneyland with the El Dorado. Yeah. I flew on a private jet to go yeah. there. I've been to Alaska fishing with the El Dorado and now Caesars. Yeah. You know, it, those are experiences that I wouldn't have otherwise if it weren't for these relationships. Yeah. No, it's a, it, 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 that's, you know, and that's why my job is so much fun is, you know, I, I, I get to, you know, I, I call people all day long and, you know, check, hey, what are you doing this? And like having this, you know, how, what are we doing today? It's beautiful, you know, but, you know, it, it's it's fun. It's 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 great. And it, it's work. You know, it's it's hard to be uh, some days, you know, you just don't want to talk to anybody. But, right. you, you know, but uh, it's 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 just a, it's a great, great business to be in, you know, the, the entertainment business. And that's the big thing that, you know, it's changed. It's gaming, but it's entertainment, you know. And, and once I kind of got the, you know, balance that out, that I know, you know, that, you know, it got a lot easier to do what I, my job, I thought, I think. Yeah. You know. Well, not only did you guys um, acquire Caesars, but just a little bit after that, you acquired William Hill. William Hill, yeah. William Hill Sports, which is a whole new mecca of uh, opportunities and uh and uh, um, uh things for uh us to work on william hill is uh is an online gaming app uh, uh one of the large i think and here again i'm not the expert on this but the, i think it was the largest uh sports book operator uh in the united states and uh, i believe in um uh, Europe and um, so and sports uh, uh, gaming gaming technologies uh, Caesar Sportsbook and all that will be the wave of the future for entertainment on uh, for um, 
our kids probably, you know, playing on the phones and the computers and all that, uh, you're going to see some crazy stuff coming out from all this, you know. So it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. William Hill is uh, now Caesar Sports. You know, we have JB Smooth. I don't know, you know, for the people, uh, you see a massive campaign with him and Patrick Oswald. Uh, you know, he's playing Caesar. Oh yeah, uh, it's the grand rollout. Uh, there's many more exciting things coming down the pipeline with that, and uh, they're going to get the. Uh, uh, as that app grows and grows, so uh, you know it's. It, it, I'm a sports better, so you know I, I you know, I kind of, you know, I really enjoy the, uh, you know, I, I bet very minimal on games, but I love betting them, so I bet them all the time. You know, it kind of keeps me involved and in all that. Um, but these apps will have uh, every game that's available in the casino eventually on them. You know, these, you know. You could play blackjack, craps, the whole thing, the whole experience. So well, I was talking to uh, Jeff uh, downstairs yeah. uh, about some of the new gaming. He just went to a gaming technology. Yeah, the gaming show in Vegas show. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. And yeah. he said there's like a, the claw thing like you have uh, at uh, like an arcade. Yeah, yeah. That it picks up and drops like a, you can play that game in yeah. a casino. So I look back to when I first started gambling, you know, 21, something like that. Yeah. A riverboat in Illinois or Iowa, right? Yeah. And uh, you had to get your big old jug full of quarters or dollars or, you know, the dollar coins. Yeah. And it's changed so much now where um, you go in, you put your card in. Yeah. No, so play, player tracking. And then you put your dollars in or you get a ticket get to a put ticket in. Get put your dollars, yeah. When is it going to change over where there's no more money involved? Is that on the way? You know, I I'm not in those meetings, but I, I, yes, it's got. Oh, be it, ha soon, right? it has to be very soon. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, you know the whole virtual, uh, you know, your bank. It's gonna be all in your bank card or whatever card you have, and yeah, that's obviously the next step going forward. But you know, the, the here, the big thing with the gambling and all that, it's the entertainment value that you're getting. I mean, you go to the, I did, I went to the show a couple of weeks ago and I was only there for a short period of time, but I mean, it's like walking into a, a movie studio, you know, I mean, you know, uh, you got the Titanic over there, you know, wheel of fortune, you know, this, this show animal house right there, you know, I mean, and these are all the video machine, you know, machines they have. Um, some of the shows that are coming out, you know, that Kevin Costner, uh, What's the Western he's doing right now that oh. he talks about? Um, uh, it's a series, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yellowstone. Yeah. Yellowstone's, you know, be coming soon. The zombies. I mean, there's so many zombie games now. <laughs> I mean, who knows what's going on? So, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, 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 it's a giant entertainment venue. So, so speaking of entertainment, um, I've met some famous people through uh, my travels around Caesars in the El Dorado. Yeah. Who have you ran into that you were starstruck by in your years of being in this uh, industry? Oh, boy. Um, when I was really young, uh, my dad and mom took my brother and I to see Frank Sinatra at the Sammy Davis showroom here at Harris. And uh, we went to Parker's Western Wear, which is no longer in town here. But uh, my dad uh, made us look like, uh, well, now I think about it, I look like two idiots wearing around <laughs> cowboy hats and cowboy boots. I think I was, I think I was seven, my brother was 11. But uh, that's who I saw. That was the act that I, uh, you know, that I truly kind of like, wow. You know, that, that, you know I, to this day, just because Frank Sinatra was iconic, I didn't get to meet him or anything, but I, I did get to see him. Yeah. But you know, uh, celebrities. I'm a, I'm a big sucker for golf golf related people. You know, and, and you know we were fortunate enough to to um, host the Barracuda tournament for many years. We still are a host to it. And uh, so uh, you know, I, I got to have dinner with Arnold Palmer once, oh which, was, which was which was to me one of my bucket list deals. Uh, he was designing a golf course here in town. And he came back to check on it, which was all world. Um, Rick Pitino, which is a name out of the uh, basketball legend. Yep. And um, was a special night. Uh, he did a private uh, dinner for us, but it wasn't so much being special. 
because he's Rick Pitino, even though Rick Pitino, I, in my book, is one of the best coaches of all time. But the stories he said, he lost one of his, um, his brother-in-law on 9-11. Mm. And uh, this was, you know, a couple years right after that. So, you know, he told us that story. And, and to this day, I still get the chill up my, when I talk about it, how, you know, um, a truly, a, he was a gifted speaker. And the story he said, it just made you cry. So, um, uh to recently, David Faraday, a guy mm -hmm. from that's on the Golf Channel, that's an uh, NBC broadcaster. You know, I'm kind of going, wow, look at him. So, yeah, it, 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 it's, you know, all the time. I, I met Rod Stewart, you know, a while ago. I went backstage and met him. You know, that was pretty neat. You know, I, I love music and all that. And, you know, seeing this guy who's 70s plus years old who looks like he's 50 yeah and, you know, and he's got the energy of a 50 year old on stage well you he know? just played here in reno a couple weeks yeah, ago. I think. yeah 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 i mean just yeah, he's just phenomenal you know you just sit there going god and you see he still has the voice and all that which is cool you know so uh yeah it, it, I, i'm fortunate every week you get to meet somebody so you know it, it's it's great especially now with the some of our uh uh hotels in vegas you know it's a little bit more going down there and seeing the stuff but yeah, it's it's great, but uh, definitely Arnold Palmer was the the highlight so far of my of my uh, life. So I knew um, that you were diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Yeah, what exactly is that? Um, I have a bad uh, immune system. I, I I grew up and uh, I had psoriasis, which is a skin disorder where your um, your skin cells multiply faster. So you have like a really bad, um, it looks like red ra rashes mm. all over your body and it's dead skin growing. So I grew up, uh, I went to Stanford Hospital as a little kid all the time. They used to soak me in tar baths. This is, you know, the, the way they treated it in the 70s. And uh, then they gave me- It was like black tar? Or what yeah, was it, yeah, it was tar. It was, you literally tar, they put tar on you, then they wrap you in saran wrap. So you were like, you were like a drumstick you know, with chocolate on it, you know, and you couldn't breathe and all that. It was terrible. Horrible. It was the worst thing in the world. But that was one of the uh, treatments for that. So my immune system's really, it's always been bad. We haven't really traced it back. When we look back at my family, why it is. So all of a sudden I was working at Wolf Run down the road. And all of a sudden I, I, I started losing weight really quick. And I've been going, God, that's the greatest thing in the world. Right. Yeah, I got, I, I'm losing weight. You know, things are going really well right now. And it got bad that I, you know, almost I stopped eating, and uh, I lost like fifty pounds in like four months. And um, so I went to a, a doctor here, and he said, "You have Crohn's disease." And uh, and I got diagnosed, and it's just it's. And you were uh, in your twenties. How old were you? No, no, I was in my uh, when I got diagnosed with it. I was uh, late thirties. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, mid thirties, and um, so. Uh, just a, a, a immune system that's bad. You, um, and he gave me a, a medication that kind of worked. Unfortunately, I'm probably the only human that has Crohn's that's fat still. <laughs> I mean, all, all these all these bastards that have it, they're all a bunch of anorexics. They're all thin, they're all good looking, and I, I can't lose weight. So I don't, I don't get that, but I, I still have it. But the, I went to a really good doctor about seven years ago and I do Humira shots. Now, I do a Humera shot every two weeks and uh, my skin's clear and my Crohn's is under complete control. So it's a, it's a good deal. But I'm so, still not losing weight like I'm supposed to be, so. <laughs> well, when you first found out about it, I mean, did, did you just feel off or how? Oh, I felt terrible. terrible. And, and, and I still, you know, uh, I mean, I was depressed. I was sleeping a lot. Mm. Um, you know, just, you know, it was really bad by my, my wife at the time. And, you know, I still, to this day, if I eat the wrong thing, I'll, uh, I'll have to go lay down pretty quick. Mm. But when I, mean, when I first had it, you know, I was here and I was, you know, I would go to lunch and I would choke, which is one of the things, you know, you would, you know, you eat a piece of lettuce and all of a sudden you're choking because mm. you can't swallow and all that. I'd excuse myself and go to the bathroom. And, and Gino kind of knew what was going on, and Rick Murdoch. So you know they would always make excuses for him. But I'd go in the bathroom, and wow, yeah, yeah, it was not good. So good way to lose weight, well, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, doesn't not for, a, not for a long run. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really good. So 
thank God. Awesome. Um, well, one of the other things that you said was a, a big challenge for you was losing your parents. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's something we all have to go through. Yeah, everybody has to go through it. I was, um, uh, my dad, uh, my dad was in his late seventies and, uh, he was a smoker throughout his life and he quit, you know, 15 years, um, before he passed away, but, uh, he had emphysema and, um, you know, hard to breathe, you know, and, uh, so, um, he went into the my mom called me, went in the hospital and, uh, you know, it was just, uh, everybody goes through it. Uh, it was just terrible though. It was, uh, the only really good thing was it went very quick. Right. So that was, that was nice. But seeing, seeing someone that, you know, that you idolize and all of a sudden, even though he wasn't, a, like I said earlier, a big man, but getting down to like 80 pounds. But still larger He's, than life as far as his oh, persona. Yeah, yeah, and to me, yeah, you know, so yeah, it, it was a terrible thing. And seeing what it did to my mom, you know, and, and and to seeing, you know, how a relationship, you know, he did everything for my mom, and all of a sudden my mom was kind of left like, you know, a deer in headlights. Right. You know, what do I do here? What do I do there? You know, how do I do this? How do I do that? So my brother and I, you know, did, a, you know, got a little bit, got a lot more involved. But my mom, being a survivor, you know, she jumped right on board and, you know, she, uh, you know, she lived on her own all the way until, you know, when uh, she, just the last two years ago, she, you know, she had a, a stroke and, uh, you know, just that kind of went real quick as well. And it was, you know, but... Uh, you know, she did pretty well on her own for a long time. You know, she was she was a rock star. Yeah. You know, so but yeah, it, it, you know, here again, you know, everybody it happens to everybody. But you know, I was uh, just it was it was bad. And then thank God my wife, who uh, much more level headed than I was, than I am, um, got involved. She really helped my parents out. And you know, they lived quite a ways away. You know, in Palm Springs. So yeah. You know, you know, it was a tough going back. And I remember forth. when you going through it, it was a tough time. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, you got the wife. You got, you got to have that person behind you to. Uh, ab absolutely, you got. You know, every every relationship needs that. Uh, the rock and she, my wife, was just from organizing the, what the doctor said and all that. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I, I didn't understand. I wasn't even listening to how, you know, she had all the medications. This, that, that. You know, we have to do this, that. You know, just like you know, just very, very special. You know, just incredible the way she handled it. You know, I, you know. I hope when I hope uh, hope when I go, she's a she's in charge. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you sharing. Yeah. Um, now, what was the? I would like to let all of our listeners kind of get an eye into our guests' reading list. So, I'd love to know what you've read lately that really inspired you you know i yeah you know, I, I used to read a ton of uh, i used to try to read a book every couple of weeks and uh i read garbage novels you know from not garbage i i used to read all the james bond books i love that i used to read uh uh horror books and all that but uh bill gustison who was a gm here I yeah. oh, love Bill. Yeah, two, you know. He's back two, in Illinois or something, Back in right? Illinois, two GMs ago would give us self-help books. And, you know, I don't give a blank blank about this. You know, how to, how, you know. And he would, he always would give me a book every, and you know what, to be honest with you, I don't, I, I told you the name of the one. They, they were great titles, but they'd always be. It was boring. something about uh, how to, the art of not giving the, a The fuck. art of not giving a fuck. Yeah, that, that's one of them. <laughs> And, and so I, I just read those. I, I love reading, you know, how to improve, even though I find it very hard to implement all the stuff that's in it. But uh, self-improvement books, uh, you know, and that actually was a really good book. That, that was one of the better ones I've read. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 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 the question should be, I watch a lot of TV, you know. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite TV yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that's hard too. I, but I, I try it. Well, I watch the food. Don't even tell me Real Housewives. No, 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 no. <laughs> I watch all the food channels and the, the, the home improvement stuff, even though I can't do any of that stuff. But uh, I try to. I mean, I act like I want to do it. I, I watch all the business channels, and uh, I, I like I like watching documentaries on uh, you know how people did things and all that. You know, I love I, History Channel documentaries yeah. all day long. Yeah, I, I watch uh, the wars and you know stuff like that. I, I'm fascinated by uh, by the past that because I think you learn a lot. You know, I tell you what, I really enjoy is. Um, this sounds stupid. I, I, I like going in the gold room and talking to people I don't know, especially older people, even though I'm getting old, about how they grew up and, you know, what things were like back, you know, especially if you can get someone, you know, that kind of lived through the, well, now it's almost impossible, but, you know, the 50s, you know, the war, if you catch something like that. Yeah. You know, it, it's amazing. It's amazing when you ask people questions. Um, you know, they want to share. They don't even know what they're sharing, you know, but it's great knowledge, no matter who you are. You know, everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story. And, and if you actually can listen, you can pick up pieces from anybody. You know, that that's something that's, you know, I mean, I, you know, here again, I, you know, I'm probably one of the, the, the dumbest people that got su lucky and successful, but I, I do listen to people, which is, you're, which you're makes it, makes it, you know, and I do know what, when to ask someone a question. So, um, and you, you learn a lot, you know, you just learn so much. Yeah. Well, you don't, you don't give yourself enough credit. I'm, uh, uh, barely made it out of high school myself, yeah, you know, and too. it's like, you know, I, it's about timing. It's about hard work. Yeah. It's about being a good person. Yeah. And I mean, you, you got all those in spades. Yeah. Well, I tell you, it, you know, uh, I wish, I wish that, uh, today's, kids or uh, here again kids i think i still think you and i are kids but, uh, <laughs> that some of their stuff would be you know uh that they would learn the art of you know asking questions listening and you know learning from people's past instead of all the you know the TikTok stuff and all that which it, it's all good i know it's all well, good the, but, the yeah kids, you know the kids that have the art of communicating the old fashioned way of communicating, just sit and have a conversation with somebody. And they have all of the influences and um, advantages of today's technology. Yeah. Those kids are going to flourish. Oh, absolutely. And they're going to kill it. Yeah. You know, the other ones who are afraid to talk to anybody, well, they're going to be wallflowers the rest of their life. Yeah. And, they got to learn how to do it. They, and it's, and it's, it's hard. It's, it's a hard thing to deal. But yeah, um, I, I do need to read some more. You, when you said that, I got a book for you. It's called True Ambition by John Zink. It's out right now. Great uh, I got to get a copy of that. Where do I get it? Anybody know here? <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, you know I'm into music. Yeah. I like to ask everybody, who's your favorite bands or entertainers? You know, I'm an 80s, 80s guy. You know, I, I grew breakfast up. Breakfast Club. Yeah, the right Breakfast then? Club. That's breakfast right, club. the Breakfast Club. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I, um, I tell you what, my... Uh, my car is either on Classic Rewind, Alternative Nation, or, or the 80s channel. And my, uh, my daughter is 16, and she knows her playlist, I tell you, is Journey, the B-52s, uh, Wham, you know, <laughs> I, 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 you know, Frank Sinatra. And, you know, so, uh, you know, it, it's such a thing so i think she learned that from me but uh i i like a lot of music but i i'm a true 80s alternative kind of guy you know well, you talk about these kids and the problem with today's music is that it's not real and they go back and all we'll be playing a show and uh, i'll be singing jesse's girl yeah that rick springfield, rick, rick springfield song yeah. right every kid knows the words to jesse's girl you know, because they enjoy good music yeah. and it's real from back then. Yeah. And it just blows me away. These kids can be seven, eight, nine, ten years old and they'll be singing along with the words to it because that's what their parents listen to. Yeah. I, I, I uh, we were in Vegas. Uh, my daughter was there for a golf match and we drove by uh, um, Johnny uh, 8 5, uh, uh, the guy that sang uh, 8, 
but you know the eight six seven five three zero nine. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Two Tone. Tommy Two Tone. Tommy Two Tone has a uh, a restaurant right off the strip. And my daughter goes, Tommy Two Tone. He sings, you know, and, I, and I'm sitting there going, Oh my God, how'd you marry? How'd you know that? You know, but she, yeah, she's so, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. You know, like I was saying earlier, I, uh, I, uh, I, I went to see Rod Stewart a while ago, and I'm just sitting there going, God, how many great songs does he have? And oh. then, um, answer your question, I like John Mellencamp quite a bit. John Cougar Mellencamp in my right. day. You know, now it's John Mellencamp. He got rid of the Cougar. Yeah, 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 he got rid of the Cougar. Yeah, so <laughs> he got rid of that. I like all music. I love, but I do love music. I know we're probably going late, but I, one of the highlights I remember when I was growing up is I used to walk into our house and when I was a little, little kid, and my mom would have the Wi-Fi. And, you know, here you're thinking your mom, you know, is you know, a prima donna old person with the Beatles freaking at like 10, volume oh, yeah. 10, the house would be shaking. You know, that's kind of like what I do when I'm driving my car by myself. And I'm going, you know, I go, God damn, she's listening to the Beatles, you know, or she would have Aretha Franklin or, you know, or, you know, the Temptations. And then she'd go run and turn down, you know, and we might, when I'd walk, you know, I was a little kid, I'd go, hey, you know, you know, so it's funny. Now when my daughter gets in my car, when I started up, the volume's on like 10, and she goes, turn it down, you know, yeah, 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 you know, so, you know, it's funny, you remember that, you know, so I would just, the love of music, I, the one thing I do wish, I wish I ever learned how to play an instrument sometime in my life. Yeah, that was the, that was the one thing that probably saved my life was yeah. uh, the drums. Yeah, you know, never, never, and, never, never did have that skill. Wish yeah. I could have. Well, I wish I could golf. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate you taking the time to be here. John, thank you. Thank I got, you, everybody. Uh, I thank got you one so much. last question for okay. you. It's the same question I end every podcast with. So this podcast is called True Ambition. I read a quote about six years ago that changed my life. It says that true ambition is not what we thought it was. True ambition is, a, is the profound desire to live usefully and walk humbly under the grace of God. So I've always been ambitious. I like that. Um, it's, it's something that uh, really kind of turned me in a different direction. Because before, my ambition was to get money, get girls, get house, get car, get whatever it was that was yeah. all to do with me. Yeah. Since I read that, it changed it up so... My true ambition now is to help other people. Yeah, and that gets old too. All about me. It's, oh it's, yeah. It, you, and you get there when you get there. It's not. It's. Yeah, you find out that's not it. No, the cliff's there. You're yeah. It's not good. You need to go more. So my question to you is: You've been a lot of places. You've done a lot of things. Uh, you, you know a lot more now than you did back then. Absolutely. Knowing what you know now, what is your true ambition, both in your career and your personal life, moving forward? uh personal life i want to be a better i want well i want to be a, the best father possible to my daughter the best husband to my wife um and our family you know we are our extended family um i want to make sure that my daughter has every opportunity that i had or more which i think is natural for anybody right um, I, I want to be a better person to all my friends and, and the people that I meet, which sometimes it's not as easy, you know, you, you know, a lot of times you live on past reputation on some of that, I feel, because your focus changes and you got to slap yourself in the head and get back to where you should have been. So, you know, that's that, uh, job wise, um, I, I tell you what, I am just so happy with my job. I think the true thing that I could do is maybe if someone wants to, maybe teach them some of the stuff that I've learned so, you know, they can have the opportunities that I had. Because I, like I said, once, you know, and I think you and I agree on this together, we, uh, you know, we did our things a way that's kind of unconventional. It was through a lot of hard work, a lot of lucky breaks, uh, a lot of self-motivation and all that. Trial and error. Trial and error, you know, it's not a, you know, so, um, and that's the way it probably is with almost everybody, but you know, I, I would like to give back more than take now with my job. So, you know, and I'm not saying that I mean, the service wise for customers will always be second. I'm a perfectionist when it comes mean, to that. But like I, I mean, it's time to kind of, you know, move other people in. 
And I think that's the, the, the spot that you're in. There's a lot of people who can learn from all those things. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to seeing what's going to come in the future for Chase. Yeah. And yeah. for Caesars because yeah. uh, it, it's going to be, it, it's already a great story. Yeah. But to see where it goes from here is going to be pretty cool. Yeah. And I tell you what, uh, it's just like I said, uh, lucky as could be. And uh, if anybody that's, you know, through this, you know, get a hold of me. I tell you what, I, I'd love to take care of you any way I can work wise. And then if not, talking about anything because uh, I, I I enjoy people. So that's it. John, luck, I can't thank you enough. Thank luck, you luck so, favors so the much. Bold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Hey, well, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Yeah. Uh, this has been the True Ambition Podcast uh, with our guest, Chase Stiegel. We'll see you next time. Thanks. The True Ambition Podcast is brought to you by IT Avalon. For more information and links to other episodes, please visit www.trueambition.org. Now, go find your true ambition. And I'll be